Hello there everyone. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to hook Windows API calls by patching the IAT. Um, <clears throat> for those that don't know, the IAT is a way for programs to import external functions from DLL files. Uh, today I'm not going to be writing any code to do so. I'm going to be doing so directly in OLEDVG. Um, Though, in a follow-up video, I may do the same thing uh, while programming a DLL file or something. But uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing we need to do is find out where the IAT is. And uh, we can do that by looking at the PE header, so uh, let's go ahead and take a peek. Alright, here we are. We're at the DOS MZ header. And... Uh, you can see here that this is the offset to the PE signature and the offset is from this base address up here uh, 0, 01 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. so uh, let's go ahead and go to the F8 offset here and uh, here we are the PE signature and uh, what we're looking for is the offset for the import address table now here's the export table and import tables these are not what we're looking for what we're looking for is a little further down right here and uh, here the offset is 1000 so it's going to be 1000 offset from this up here the address of this page so let's uh, go ahead and go there and uh, here we go uh, luckily for us it's right here at the top and uh, let me show you the program that I'm going to be working with today it's uh, just a simple calculator it's got uh, several different colors for the buttons pink blue red so on and so forth and it even has a special GUI if you chose to uh, view it that way so uh, what I think I'm going to do is just use the set text color API here and just uh, hook that and set the color to all the buttons to like red or something so let's do that so what hooking an API really is is redirecting the call for that API to your own function and having your own function call the original function when it's done doing whatever it needs to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the IAT entry for set text color for a function of my own which I'm going to write and then my function is going to call this address here for the real function after modifying the color value for set text color. Now, so to do this on an Ollie DBG, I'm going to need to find a code cave. I've already gone to the liberty of doing that, which is here. And uh, before we before we write any code, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, patch the IAT to this here and uh, run the program so we can check out the stack. So uh, I've already got the address of this area here copied down and I've already had the address of our original function copied down so let's go ahead and uh, go to the dump uh, and here we see the address for this and let's uh, go ahead and just replace it with the address of our own function here and oh, I'm gonna need it in a little Indian so just gonna do a binary paste Oops. There we go. And if we reanalyze that, it should show up. So if we follow it, it takes us to our function. All right, I'm going to go ahead and run the program. And here we are. Now, if we look at the stack, the set text color function was just called. So it pushed on the two parameters for the function and and a return address. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and uh, just follow this real quick. Here's the function call and it pushed the color on first and then the HDC uh, so let's go ahead and take a look here the prototype for the set text color function is an HDC and a color ref but if you uh, notice the color ref is pushed on first and then the HDC so it's pushed on in reverse order alright and the color ref is a 
4 byte D word value with a BGR format. So to set it to all red, we just have to set the lowest byte to FF or 255. All right, so we need to skip this return address and we need to skip this HDC. They're both four bytes, so we're going to add eight to our stack pointer at our function. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. <coughs> Alright, so ESP is going to now point at our color value, and then we just want to move the uh, <coughs> the highest value into the lowest byte, so that's move, and we want to specify that it's a D word pointer, and FF, there we go. And so we don't mess up the stack, we have to subtract 8 from ESP, so we've got it back to where it was before. And then that's all our function needs to do. So we now call the real function to do the rest of the work for us. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push the address of the function on the stack and return. And that function will actually return to the real function that called it, or the part of the code that called the real function. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops. Uh, looks like I need to change that to little Indian or whatever. There we go. Ah, crap. Did it on the wrong one. Okay, and then uh, we just do return. There we go. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and step through this. So this, this uh, step is going to add 8 to ESP, which is here. So it should be C8. Yep. And now it's pointing to our color F value, which is currently set to black. So it should move FF into the lowest byte here. Yep. And then it should subtract 8 from ESP again so that we uh, don't mess up the stack. Right. And then it should call set text color and then return. And there we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and run the program now. Uh, I got to remove the breakpoint. Okay. And now all our buttons should be red. Yes. All right. And I'm just going to play with it here for a sec. Let's uh let's try changing them to green. Probably look like crap, but wow. Yep, green. And we could do blue just for the hell of it. And blue. Yep. <laughs> so uh that's a very basic basic example of patching the IAT and playing around with function parameters before they're processed. And uh, that's all for this video. For more videos and tutorials like this, be sure to check out SuckO.com. It's a wonderful computer technology community with, uh, with great people involved. So be sure to check it out.